Hey, I'm here to talk to you about chiptunes today. This is going to be a two-part series about the tools that you can use to create chiptunes. These videos aren't meant as a tutorial, but as a guide to point you in the right direction, so remember to check out the description for plenty of links and information. Now the way I see it, there's three different levels for making chiptune. There's the bottom level for the most advanced users, and that involves things like circuit bending and coding and assembly. That's out of the scope of this video. Then there's the intermediate level that uses trackers to create authentic chiptune music. That's what the second video will be about. And finally there's the top level for people who are just getting into chiptune. Sometimes this style is called fake bit because it's not using real sound chips, but I think whatever you call it, just remember the golden rule of music. If it sounds good, it is good. So I'd like to get right into it and start with some general programs that you can use to make chiptune, and the first is Beatbox. This program opens up in your browser, so you can try it right away if you want. It's a simple sequencer that comes with a bunch of basic waveforms that you can try out. It's not much, but it could be a good start for some people. The next program I'd like to talk about is LMMS. Formerly known as Linux Multimedia Studio, LMMS is a Digital Audio Workstation, or DAW, meaning it comes with everything you need to make a piece of music. Especially useful for chiptune, it comes with synthesizers that sound like NES, Game Boy, Commodore 64, and more. After that is a little-known program called Musagi. It's a music editor similar to LMMS that comes with NES sound emulation and other helpful instruments for chiptune. The UI isn't as solid as LMMS, but sometimes it can be good to try multiple programs and find a workflow that you like. The last program I want to mention in this section is Sunvox. Sunvox is a modular synthesizer, meaning you create sounds by connecting different modules together to make instruments. Sunvox is also a pattern-based sequencer or tracker, meaning the musical data is arranged vertically into a list. This may be a little advanced for new users, but it could be a good introduction to things like signal flow and tracking, and it's good for all sorts of electronic music too. Some advice that's been shared with me is that it's not the instrument that makes a good composer, but their experience and their skill. Take the music that you're listening to now. It was made using only sine waves, the most simple of waveforms. Of course, having a good instrument sure can help. But good chiptune is all about using simple sounds to create more complex sounding music. I think the best thing that you can do for yourself is just get some general education on sound synthesis. Find an instrument or a synthesizer that you like and just figure out what all the knobs and dials do. Most synths can generate the sounds that are needed for chiptune. In the second video, I'll be listing specific VSTs that you can use for most different sound chips that are available, but I'll suggest some more general instruments that you can use here. First off, VST stands for Virtual Studio Technology. They're audio plugins that you can use in your DAW as instruments or as an effect. LMMS and Musagi have some limited support for VSTs, but it might be better to get a more conventional DAW. There's plenty of DAWs out there, many with free trials. I'm not going to go on the differences between them all, it usually just comes down to a matter of personal taste. The best thing to do is just look around and find one that you like. Personally, I'm a fan of FL Studio, but as a suggestion, Reaper's a solid program and it has a lengthy WinRAR-like free trial. Now onto some instruments that you can use. In the paid section, Xverse Serum and Native Instruments Massive are popular choices right now. Serum has a nice pay-as-you-go option, as well as a nice chiptune pack by Shuribon. Massive has been instrumental in the creation of dubstep, but can make some decent chiptune sounds as well. In fact, Disasterpiece used Massive in the creation of the Fez soundtrack. There's a good write-up about this in the description. Either of these would be a good investment if you're serious about making music, but honestly they're a little overkill for chiptune. Most DAWs come with their own instruments that would do the job fine, such as FL Studio's 3 Oscillator. And there's plenty of free options out there. A couple that I like are Dexed, which models the FM synthesis of the popular Yamaha DX7, and Helm, a decently powerful software synth. You really don't need something that's specifically marketed towards chiptune, you just need to know what you're doing, and you can make sounds like Dust Force or VVVVVV. But if you're looking to make some authentic sounds straight away, then there's two major options you can buy. One is Plog's Chip Sounds, which emulates 15 different vintage 8-bit era sound chips. And the other is Super Audio Cart by Impact Soundworks, which instead of emulation, uses over 6,000 recorded samples of classic video game consoles. 
Of course, if you're just looking to make sound effects, BFXR is a nice little browser resource that will generate some sounds, as well as LabChirp, which you can download and is a little bit more in-depth. The last thing to talk about here is sound fonts. If you just want to use the sounds from a game right away, you could consider a sound font or a sample pack. This could be your best option for some games, especially popular games from the N64 and Nintendo DS eras. There's a little bit of a legal dilemma here using other people's sounds, but that doesn't stop most people. You'll need a sound font player to use them. Native Instruments Contact is a powerhouse here, but a great free sampler is called TX16WX. A good sampler will give you the tools to edit things like the loop points of the samples, which often aren't the best in the sound fonts that you can find just floating around out there. And if you have any modern sounds that you want to turn into an 8-bit sort of chiptune sound, then you can use a bit crusher on them. The one I recommend here is called Crush with a K, but Tal's bit crusher also seems to be quite popular. That'll do it for this video. In part 2, we'll look at making authentic chiptunes for each console and the differences between them all. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you there.